to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today I'm going to go over how I made this really cool commission for a client. Someone decided to commission me to make a galaxy themed raptor and it was just too good of a design not to share with you guys. So let's get started. Okay guys, so this is the pattern that I'm going to use to make my raptor's body. Now it's been quite a while since I've done a raptor so I decided to redraw and redesign my pattern for them. So this raptor is going to end up having a wire frame so it can stand up and everything, so I did have to take that into account while drawing this out. Also, this piece is going to end up having wings, so I had to redesign the arm along with the positioning of the arm. So the person that commissioned me for this wanted everything to be very pastel and galaxy themed. So I found this really cool fabric that's super soft. The only problem with it is it's kind of slippery. It's not really stretchy, but it does slide around a lot and it's gonna be really hard to sew this on the sewing machine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew it to another piece of fabric so it has a backing and it'll be a little bit stiffer. So I have this white plush fabric and I've got all the patterns drawn onto the back of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to pin these two pieces of fabric together. So I'm going to face both of them downwards and just pin them into place. And then I'm going to go over all of these lines with my sewing machine. So we're basically just tracing everything that we've drawn out on the fabric. Once I have the backing on all my fabric pieces, I'm going to cut them out and then I can start putting them together. So the pieces that we're going to be using to make our body are a left and right body piece, a left and right neck piece, a left and a right for each arm, so two of each, and then the inside parts of the back legs along with the belly. Now the belly piece I ended up breaking up into two pieces, so the top half is going to be the neck. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew those two pieces together. Next, I'm going to take the pieces for the wings and I'm going to be sewing down the very front of them. I'm leaving the back open because I'm going to sew on feathers and I need that open. After that, I'm going to take the left and right of the body pieces and I'm going to sew the inside parts of the legs onto the pattern. So I'm basically just going to be sewing right down the front of it. I'm leaving the back open so we can add the wireframe later. Now I'm going to take that belly piece and I'm going to sew the body pieces together onto it. So we're just going to sew this right between the left and right of the body piece. And while we're doing that, we're also going to be sewing the under part of the tail. So we're going to connect the tail together as well. Okay, now we can add the wings to the piece. So I'm going to be sewing those into place on that little slit that we have on the body. So I'm going to sew the under part of the wing on first and then the top part of the wing. Lastly, we just need to add the sides of the neck to the piece, and that's basically all the sewing right now. So now that we have majority of the sewing done, we're going to move on to making the clay pieces. So for our clay pieces, we're going to need to make a head along with a pair of arms and a pair of legs. So I'm going to start with the arms and legs first. So for our arms and legs, I have wire frames set up for them. These are mainly just so there's some support and we have something to build our clay off of. So the first bit of clay that we need to do is we need to make our claws. So I'm going to add that to the tip of each wire for each toe or finger. So I'm going to start with the hands first. And I'm just going to sculpt a little bit of clay on the tip of each wire. Then we're going to move on to our feet and make the claws for those as well. So we're basically doing the same thing. The only thing different with this is the wireframe is set up a little bit differently and we have that raised toe. So we're going to get all of our claws finished and then we're going to do a little bit of a pre-bake. So we're going to set our oven at 275 Fahrenheit and bake our clay for roughly about 20 minutes. Just enough so that the claws are hard enough so we don't have to worry about bumping them. Once our claws are out of the oven, we can start working on the under part of the hands and feet. So for this, I'm just going to take strips and balls of clay and I'm just going to start covering up those wires. We're just going to make sure everything is completely covered and we're going to blend everything together and start adding some textures and stuff. Now remember when you're doing your feet, since these are going to be standing, you want to make sure there's somewhat of a flat point on the base of it. So you want this foot to be able to kind of stand up on its own. Also, you want to make sure that the base of the foot is nice and thick so there's a little bit of weight to it so it kind of stands better. So I'm going to add all the textures and stuff after everything's all nice and smoothed out and I'm going to do this to both of the back legs and the hands. 
Once I have all the details and I'm liking how my feet and hands look on the underside, I'm gonna put these in the oven again, same temperature, 275, for probably about 35 minutes this time. Just a little longer because we are working with a bit more clay. And then once all of our clay pieces are out of the oven again and have cooled to touch, we can start on the tops of the feet and hands. So we're going to just put scales on the tops of these. So I'm going to roll out a bunch of clay balls and I'm going to start layering them over the toes. And as we get to the base of the toes where they connect, I'm just going to switch to larger balls and kind of make them a bit more oval so they cover up more surface. So I'm just going to lay out my scales on the tops of my feet and hands and then I'm going to use my tools to kind of straighten everything out. Once I like how this looks, I'm going to put our feet and hands in the oven for one final bake, 275 Fahrenheit, for probably about 45 minutes this time. And then while our hands and feet are baking, we can start on the face. So I'm going to take a lump of tin foil, I'm going to shape it into a rough idea of a cone, and then I'm going to completely cover this in clay. Once my tin foil is completely covered, I'm going to smooth out my clay, get a nice base to work with, and just kind of get the rough idea of what the shape of the head should be. And then we can start adding some details to the face. So the first thing I'm going to add is going to be the eyes. Now the person that commissioned me wanted to have a pair of glass eyes, so I'm going to be using those. So the first thing I'm going to do to add our glass eyes is I'm going to place some little balls of clay in the position where I want the eyes to go. This is mainly so the eyes can kind of lift up a little bit and look more forward. So I'm going to place those balls and then I'm going to put the eyes right on top of that. I'm going to make sure the eyes are positioned correctly, nice and evenly, and then I'm going to start adding strips of clay to make the eyelids. I'm going to get everything completely covered and smoothed out and I'll probably add a little bit more clay to kind of refine the shape of the face. Once I like how the eyes are looking, I'm going to move on to making the mouth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out on the clay where I want the mouth to be. So I'm just going to roughly scratch that in and make sure everything is even. So this is just kind of a rough sketch before we lay our clay down. Once I like that positioning, I'm going to start adding some teeth to it. So I'm just going to roll out some little cones of clay and I'm going to push them onto the face. I'm going to refine them later with my tools and then I'm going to take a long strip of clay and this is going to be the upper lip. We're going to lay that across the face and then we're going to push it in and blend it upwards. This is going to be the upper lip so we're going to blend it upwards. If you're going to do a bottom lip, you'll just blend it downwards. But we're going for an overbite and not an underbite. Now one cool detail that the commissioner wanted for this was to have a pair of tiny little wings right over the eyes. So I'm going to be making those out of clay as well. Now the trouble with this is we need to make these wings look kind of delicate, but we also need to make sure that they're thick enough so that they aren't fragile. So I'm going to add that clay right above the eye, I'm going to blend it into the face, and then I'm going to use my tools to make some feather details. So I'm just going to add some line work to divide this into a few different feathers, and then we're going to add another layer of this to make another layer of feathers, and this is going to make it thicker and safer so you don't have to worry about it breaking off. Now because these wings are so small, I'm not going to add a ton of detail to it. I'm just going to make sure that I have the shape of it looking right so it looks like feathers and not horns or anything weird. After that, I'm going to be adding some gold crystals to the back of the head and some scaling. So I'm going to place those where I want them and then I'm going to start adding some scale texture to the face. So I'm going to go around the face and just add line work and different textures to make different types of scales all over the face. So the eyes are going to have kind of smaller scales and around the lips are going to be kind of bigger. And then to make some more raised up scales, I'm just going to add a little bit of clay on top and push them in with my tool. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how the face is, so I'm going to put this in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about 45 to 55 minutes. So we're going to get all of our clay baked, cooled, and we can start on the painting next. Okay, so for our painting, the first thing we need to do is we need to primer our clay pieces. Now because everything is going to be very pastel-y, I'm not going to be primering in a very dark color. Normally what I would end up doing with a Raptor is I would primer with black and go over that with the extra colors and stuff. But because we're going for such a pastel light color, I'm going to be going over it with gray. So again, if you're going to end up making a Raptor with darker colors, I would recommend primering it with a black. 
Once our primer layer is dried, we can start adding the colors to the face. So remember, we're going for more of a pastel -y color and we're also going for a galaxy theme. So I'm going to be sticking mostly around pinks, blues, and purples. So I'm just going to decide where I want the colors on the face and feet to be. Remember, we're going for something kind of random, so I'm going to apply my paint and then I'm going to blend it in. I'm going to do that with one color and then I'm going to add another color and then another color and then if we want to go back to any other colors, we can. Okay, I like how this looks, but we need to add a bit of a darker color, just a tiny bit so we have a bit of contrast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a really beaten up old brush. I usually use this for blending, but if I apply it lightly, I can create kind of a speckly effect. And I'm just going to use some purples, and then I'm going to also do this with white paint afterwards to add some highlights. So with this, we're going to keep this random. We're not covering the whole clay piece with this. We're just going to add little spots of it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to let this dry up a little bit and then I need to clean off these glass eyes because I did get quite a bit of paint on them. So I'm just going to take a tool and I'm going to scrape the paint right off of the glass eyes. I'm going to make sure to be very careful not to scratch the actual glass. So we're just going to clean those up and then we can move on to adding a little bit of extra detail and highlights to the face and feet. So for the face, the main bit of painting that I'm going to add for the detail is just kind of going over some of the scales to refine the shape a bit more. So for the lips, I'm going to add a bit of a pearlescence to them, and then there's some of those raised up scales on the back of the head, and I'm going to be painting them a lighter pink. Okay, so the last bit of detail that we're going to be doing is we're going to add a gold touch to everything. So we're going to be touching up the face around those gold crystals on the back of the head, and then we're also going to be painting all the claws gold as well. The paint I'm using for this is a modeling paint, so it's a little bit different. It's not an acrylic paint. After that, I'm going to let all of my paint dry, and then I'm going to apply a thin layer of resin over everything to lock in and protect the paint. So these are going to have to sit overnight to cure, and then afterwards we can start putting our raptor together. Okay, it's the following day, and we're going to be putting our raptor together. So the first thing I need to do is I have a wire frame, and I need to put this inside of the fabric body. So we're just going to run the fabric body over this. After that, we're going to be adding our clay feet to the wireframe. So I'm going to be taking those, I'm going to take a thinner wire, and we're going to wrap them onto the wireframe. After we have our feet added to the wireframe, we now need to take the fabric for the legs, and we're going to glue it around the base of the foot. So we're just going to use a little bit of E6000 glue and a little bit of hot glue to hold it into place while the glue is curing. And we're just going to kind of go around the base of the foot and let this dry for a little bit. After that's dried, you can take your needle and thread and we can sew up the back of the leg and stuff the legs. Once we're done with the legs, we can move on to the tail for a little bit. We're not going to close up the tail, but we are going to finish off the end of it. So remember how I said that we're going to have wings on our raptor? Well, the owner decided that they wanted to have real feathers. So we're going to be adding some feathers to the end of the tail, and then later we're going to add it to the arms to make some wings. So I have a bundle of feathers all put together and I'm just going to glue this to the end of the wire for the tail. And then I'm going to take the fabric for the tail and kind of glue that around the feathers as well. Okay, so now that that's done, we can move on to the arms. So what we're going to do is we're going to take those clay hands that we made and we're going to add them to the wire frame just like we did with the feet. Then we're going to take the fabric for the arms and we're going to glue it around the base of the wrist just like the feet we did earlier. We're going to let that dry a little bit and then we can sew on the wings. So I have these already put together and we're basically going to insert this into the arm and we're going to sew the fabric for the arm closed in between the feathers. So we're kind of like taking our needle and thread and going in between the feathers to kind of sew the fabric closed so that the feathers stick through afterwards. So we're going to get the back of the arm sewn closed and we can stuff them and then move on to adding the head to the piece. So for the head, we're just going to take our clay head and we're going to take the wire for the neck and we're going to glue that inside of the head. Then we're going to take the fabric for the neck and glue it around the base of the head. So right now, the last thing we need to do is we need to stuff the rest of the body and close it up. Except we do have one little detail to add while we're closing it up, and that's going to be those gold crystals that we had on the face. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding crystals to the back of the raptor as we close it up. 
So what I'm doing every now and again while I'm closing up the raptor's back is I'm taking my needle off of my thread and then I'm running my thread through the hole in the crystal. And then I'm just going to continue sewing a little bit and then do the same thing again until we get all the way down the back of the raptor. Okay guys, and that's how I did a galaxy themed raptor. I had so much fun making this piece and I can't wait to mail him off to his new owner. Anyways guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, leave me a like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!